Well, hi, good morning, and thanks so much for joining me in my shop here. It's April 10th, another shiny but cool, sunny, sunny but cool day outside. So, uh, for this video, I'm not going to work on the radio in front of you. Instead, I'm going to investigate all the uh, voltmeters I have available in my shop here. Um, the reason for this is uh, a couple discussions I'm having with a couple people uh, concerning uh, voltmeter input impedance and what am I looking for? I'm looking for... oh, you know what? I took it out of the room. The uh, uh, On the uh, schematic sheet for this radio uh, or on the information for this radio there's a table of voltages measured from within the radio and as uh, many schematics do it declares what kind of meter was used to make the measurements. And the meter that was used in this case is a 500 ohms per volt meter. And that's a very, very crappy meter. That meter would tend to load circuits much more than most of the meters you, you can see in the camera shot here. Meter meters like this. Or even a modern uh, meter of this sort. That also has a very, very high input impedance and will not load certain so will not load circuits that much. Now there are some circuits in these radios that are of such a high impedance that pretty much any meter is going to load it down. So it doesn't matter what meter you use you're going to affect the radio. Uh, but there's other locations, circuit lo locations, where um, certainly high impedance meters can be used and get a very accurate impression of what the true voltage is. Or even lower impedance uh, meters um, could be used in certain in many locations here would not have any bad effect on the radio and will also give you a good valid reading. And the trick is to know where these situations are and uh, how you know what kind of meter you've got and you know once again you gotta know what you're doing. Usually it's a big challenge for me to know that last part. So just in thinking about this I think the first first step in my investigation is to take a close look at all the meters you see. <laughs> lots of meters here, I've got more meters yet, and just see see what information's on the face of them. Uh, do they come out and say what their impedance is, or how do they describe themselves to viewers like me or you? Uh, and once I've done that, then I'll try to dream up some kind of test, probably run the radio and perform the test specified on the sheet and use a high impedance and a low impedance meter and just see what the voltage readings were. The voltage readings that come on the sheet uh, were all lower than what I read with this high impedance meter. Is that because I used a high impedance meter? And just how high is this in ohms per volt? And what is this ohms per volt thing? Why don't we start right there just before I get going. Now many of you are going to know this. Uh, the gen Generally individuals watching my video are pretty far along in all this stuff. and. Uh, understanding uh, input impedance and a voltmeter, that's pretty basic stuff. Ohms per volt is simply a way of describing the impedance of a meter such that you can know the true impedance on any scale setting. When you change scales with meters, their input impedance changes. Let me get one of my high power, high power meter here. Eight range multitester. This is probably from around 1970, 1975, something like that. It says right, right, one of the first things they declare, 2,000 ohms per volt. That's not that bad. That's four times higher than the 500 ohms per volt. So this is a better meter than the one that was used to take the readings that were written on the test sheet for this radio. A 500 ohm per volt. I'm like, I don't think I have that bad of a meter. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a classic one here. Um, I'm just looking it all over. Does it say anywhere? You would think on a meter like this, they would certainly write it somewhere. Often it's written right up in here, but all I see is model 442. Hmm. Maybe there's a way we can measure it. Maybe we can measure it. Can you just get another ohm meter and measure it? 
<laughs> Can you do that? I don't even know. Okay, let me get my other camera here. And we're going to go on a somewhat close-up tour of all my meters, and we're going to read what's on the face of them. And so, to, to a large degree, what's happening here is I'm training my, my, myself. Uh, just going to start way off on the left side of my shop here. So the first meter I come into is one I use a lot. Okay, I use this guy a lot. Hmm. Full scale, 200 microamps. Well, they're not giving it in ohms per volt here. They're giving it in the actual current draw on the meter movement itself. Now this is a, a vacuum tube voltmeter, like it says right on, a vacuum tube voltmeter. So the impedance of the meter itself is not a factor. It's the impedance of the circuitry in this meter. So, so this is what they're giving as the movement. Now what about the input impedance? I don't think it's going to say anywhere. That's interesting. Never seen that little note on a, on a meter before. You know, that means that if you want to uh, this is an, an RMS meter, right? Root mean square meter, heating meter. This meter is based on the heating, heating, uh, heating effect. <laughs> it doesn't mean it has a hot uh, element in it. it. Just means it's RMS. It's based on heating, heating effect. So if you want to get peak to peak, you just multiply the reading by 2.83, and then you've got peak to peak, or 1.4 for peak. If you want, didn't know that was on there. Any other little hints here? No. Daystrom. Okay. So that's a very important meter uh, for me. Now let's go over to this one. This is a fairly recent addition. Thank you again to the kind person who gave me this this meter. Uh, this, this is the voltage supply for my shop, and it looks like it's not going to tell us anything about the meter at all. In, in, in a sense, why would we be concerned that this meter is built into this unit? It's not a meter for testing as such. So they haven't, haven't revealed anything. Okay, hang on here. I got my, my camera cord stuck on the ground there. Okay, so here's another piece of equipment with a meter on it. This is, again, this is a built-in meter, so there's really no reason why it should tell us much about it, and it doesn't, other than Harrison, New Jersey. Okay, uh, moving along here. So this is my... Uh, DC power supply, shop shop supply, and it's got two meters. Here's one. Well, that's interesting. This one gives you full scale one milliamp. The meter movement requires one milliamp to go full scale, and it gives its resistance, 100 ohms. Uh, there is no, I was going to say, there's no variation in scales, but in fact, it, it, it this isn't this isn't really a meter with two scales. This is really two completely different uh, measurements going on here. There's a switch, the meter switch you throw. Uh, well, I guess the hundred ohms is the actual movement itself. Advanced Meter Company. Okay, now this is the same unit, just the other side, we have an ammeter. 0.66 ohms, wow. So that, that in the 150 milliamps, that's probably the actual movement itself. Which is, which is why they have the red line there, maybe. <laughs> don't, don't push it. Now, I, I guess you can go to 150 and not damage the movement, but something else in the unit gets overloaded. So that's another, another kind of way of showing it, because this movement, it sure looks pretty much the same as this one, physically. And we're not going to be able to examine them too, too, too carefully otherwise. That 0.66 the only one says 100. Okay. Let's keep going here. Okay, so now we're looking at my Ballantine uh, audio meter. This is a high quality meter. Either Weston Electric, Newark, New Jersey. Do not let me hold. Let me, I'm holding this at the end of my arm, which is why I'm shaky. Or let me hold it a little more steady. Do not use red screw except for range overlap adjustment under conditions as described in the instruction booklet. Pointer normally off scale with zero input. 
Yeah, yeah, th this is a decibel meter, so it it doesn't sit at zero. It sits where you see it. It doesn't, there is no zero on a decibel meter. So if you try to zero this, shame on you. And if you try to use the screw here to do it, double shame on you, because they wrote a great big long message to you not to do that. But it doesn't tell you anything about the meter movement. Oh, what's that? Model. Again, this is in a volt. I'm sorry, I'm kind of yelling in the microphone here, aren't I? It's kind of in a. Uh, it's not kind of. It's 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 in a meter. So, again, electronic meter. It's the input to the electronic meter that's a, a, a concern to a user, not the meter movement. So they're not revealing much. Okay, here's some more meters in equipment, and what are they going to tell us about them? Probably nothing again. Is there anything way down there? This looks like a number. Yeah, I'm not going to tell us anything about these. Once again, th these aren't th these are inherent in a device, so they're not going to. Uh, it's not a concern. I don't reveal it. Okay, I come down to this one. This is my uh, my signal generator here. It's got some numbers, but. Once again, this is incorporated in a piece of equipment, so my concern about its operation is minimal, you know, because, because. Okay, so I'm gonna come down to another very expensive, high quality audio meter here. Oh, sorry, I keep getting my wire caught. So this is on a, uh, son of a gun, <laughs> Jeepers creepers, I got Every time I, I, I move, the wire gets caught under something there. Okay, let's get back at it here. This is a uh, meter. Where's, there it is down there. This is a Gila Packer high quality meter. Looks like I need to wash it a bit. Uh, so up on the movement itself. Just some interesting information, but nothing. Yeah, so that's about one milliwatt at 600 ohms. So I think what they're trying to say, what's up above there? Ooh, secret message. Daystrom. Something or other, a division of Daystrom. Um, so I, I think one milliwatt into 600 ohms is the same as one dBm, I think. I'm not sure. I'd have to read up on it to be sure. But again, no, no talk about the movement, but again, this is a electronic meter. Uh, it's really the input of the meter that would be important. Have I got some more meters here? You better believe it. Okay, let me just move this here. We'll look at this guy again a little closer. So this, I believe, would be the kind of meter a TV repair guy, radio repair guy in the 40s would have it is in his hand, especially when he's at your house. Uh, and it's probably how this was used. It's gone. And instead of a range selector switch, you just move the plug into all these different uh, uh, terminals here to pick what you want the meter to do. It does everything. Amps, ohms, everything. Zero adjust. Radio City products. Model 442. Serial numbers. 2300 something. Well, I don't see. Now, this one is liable to have a statement on it indicating what its impedance is. Because of its, because it's a general instrument, you know. It sure doesn't seem to, does it? Well, way down there. Huh. That's funny because I thought I knew the impedance of this meter. On the back or anywhere else, got to be on the front. Let me look again because I thought I knew it. But I don't, I don't know what it is. But I thought I knew it. Well, I'm not going to show up. You write a reading here. No. No, they're keeping this one secret. Maybe in testing we can kind of figure it out somehow. Or maybe you can read it directly. Still not sure of that. Okay, how about the little Micronta? It's the kind of meter you buy uh, to test batteries with, generally, that's what people would have these for. Well, there it is, right there. 2K ohms per volt. Two joules. 
Hey, I have two jewels. Jewels. Hey, it's the best meter I've got in the whole thing, man. It's got jewels in it. Holy smokes. So, 2,000 ohms per volt, just like I said, it's four times better than the meter. I, don't, I just don't have one that lousy. Um, okay, I, I have some other quite interesting. Interesting, what did I do with it? The interesting thing, which I've. <laughs> it's so interesting, I've got to reach it in front of me. That's the problem here, it's right in front of me. Here, let's take a look in here. I'd say what I've got here at this point is these two meters are of interest in, in using in some experimental role and then all my other meters are all very high input I think 10 mega ohms 10 to 11 mega ohms look in here hmm all kinds of meters in here meter of movements So we're going to switch to the close-up camera here. I want to look at each one of these. Let me do this. Bring this little table here. Well, we'll take a look at each one of these. A little bit of close-up. Okay, starting with this one here. Do they reveal anything? No, they don't. So, if you're going to use that for something, wait a minute, there's some writing down here. Nope. So, I'm going to guess most of these don't reveal themselves. There's an older style one here. New Haven, Connecticut. Looks like it's stuck. 203. Nope. Doesn't say. This one that's still in the box. Look at this. This is a beauty. Eh? A Simpson meter. Oh, 100 ohms per volt. Here we are. Now we're getting down to business. <laughs> 25 volts maximum. But that's that's just not good enough for what I'm trying to do here, I don't think. It's number five. DC. No statements. That's obviously a FM tuning one. You know, because it's in a circuit, it's not being used as an instrument. No one should have particular interest. Yeah, another one. Uh, over its input impedance except the designer whatever. No, I, got, I got multiples of the same meter. Check this one out here. I think I got these at a ham. Uh, I don't know where I got them at a yard sale. I don't know where I got them. They're all the same. Oh, these are even more. They all look... They don't all look the same. Kind of neat, eh? Yeah, I didn't know I had like the selection here. <laughs> oh my, look at that. A double. It's a double meter. How about that? Again, no information. So if you wanted to use these, you'd have to experiment and find out what's going on. Uh, you know, put a little current through them and see, see what happens. A whole bunch more of those same green ones again. Wow. Get that. Neat, but no information on them. That's just the makers. Yeah, that's the recycling stamp. Made in made made somewhere. Made in I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so none of these are telling us anything much about them. Yeah, this guy's got uh, ooh, he's a busy meter. It's 
an S. That's an S meter. That's a radio. This you know what? This is from a CB radio, I think, because on the right would be the power up to five watts. Well, three, I think, really. And then on the right are S units. That's from, I think it's a CB radio meter. What about the rest of the? Where's the meter? Where's the radio? <laughs> I got the meter. I got the meter. Don't have the radio. A little mini guy with it. it. Looks like a push button. Must be a push to read. Now that's that's kind of weird, isn't it? Why would they? Why would they? It's a little meter like this. They have a push to read meter because you don't want the meter reading all the time. <laughs> Look, it doesn't work. Duh. <laughs> Okay, I'm not finished yet. I'm just going to throw these back in here because none of these are going to be of any interest. Right. Now, what would a meter look like if the meter was designed to measure 20,000 volts or 30,000 volts? And the power company I, I uh, worked for high voltage meters that they used to read high voltage is 13,000 volts, 8,000 volts, things like that. The meter, you, you held two separate rods. One was just a rod with the contact at the far end. And the other one has the meter movement sitting right here. And then there's a long rod, so three, four feet long. Those are the test leads. Those are basically, basically this, only four feet long. And you, you stand outside the cabinet and you put them in. Well, I don't know if you could ever convince me to do that. I don't. I don't know. But, in the case of uh, home electronics repair, there is a need, it was a need, to measure a very high voltage on a TV set. And to do that, they had this guy. High voltages don't exist in those TV sets anymore. Let's take a look at this one. Thousands of volts, that's the scale. Uh, at the bottom, what's it says? It says ICO. It's ICO. <laughs> Didn't know that. There's the business end. Um, I guess this is to try to increase the resistance even more because the track path. You know, there's there's an, an arc path through the air, and this would this this would require a huge voltage to jump this cap. A huge voltage. Like if your hand was here, right? Maybe you're stupid. You're doing this. Well, you have the awful stupid. Mm, do this. That's the uh, that's the arc path through the air. It's very hard, but over a surface, not nearly as hard. Surfaces are a big problem, and so. Even though the arc can't possibly jump from here to your hand down here, it could potentially track down the surface. So they've increased the surface distance here by making the electricity work its way up and down. It may can't. You just can't imagine it could actually get past all that. That's what's going on with that. How many ohms per volt? No one would care with a meter like this. Again, this is a, a one single-use instrument. Uh, probably just some resistors in here maybe to pad things down a bit because uh, if you're going to read this goes up to 30,000 volts if you're going to read 30,000 volts first of all if you read 30,000 volts on a picture tube you're getting x-rayed I think it's pretty certain you get much above 28,000 volts and uh, you know electrons have enough uh, energy when they strike the carbon in the glass they can emit an x-ray. It's a big scare when I was a kid for a couple years. The color TVs first came out, a few of them went above, up when it went up into the 30s, and they discovered this x-ray issue. I still today don't really know just how serious the amount of x-rays were. Okay, uh, more meters. I got, I got more meters? I may not. I think we've hit the end of the road. Other than meters, again, that are incorporated in equipment. So I think now I'm going to stop for a minute. I'm going to get the radio going, and we're going to take a, a 
with a number of instruments, we're going to make the same voltage test and see what they all have to say. And we'll, we'll go from there. Oh, hold on a moment. I found more meters to look at in my shop here. Just a couple more. Okay, so this first one is one of the audio meters I use to, to monitor uh, while I'm making these videos. Uh, it's a very expensive, very fancy looking meter movement, beautiful looking thing from a very expensive Luxman amplifier, but I'm afraid this is all that remains of it is this front panel. <laughs> the rest of it is gone. I hung on to these meters though. And sure enough, there we are. That's one channel. That's the other channel, which isn't working at the moment for just some, some unimportant reason. Um, what do these guys say? 8 ohm load. So what it's trying to say here is the watt reading is calibrated if the speakers you hooked up to the amplifier are 8 ohms. I mean, this is not actually reading power. Lux Corporation right on the front of the meter. Okay, just below it, this is, this is a meter uh, that reads the percent of line voltage available at the plug where I'm plugging in the uh, uh, equipment that I'm testing on my bench. So if this went up to 0.8, it means it's 80% of 117 volts or whatever the supply is. 22052. Mm. Well, I think that's just a number. I don't think that actually means current, but it might. It might actually mean current. I don't know. Okay, while we're on audio meters, there's another couple meters that monitor the program level. Uh, it's monitoring my voice right now, but you can see these meters don't even move on this. The signal level is so low at this point in my system that these meters don't even react to it. Unless I go, hey, hey! <laughs> what, if I, what if I clunk it? There, you saw some movement finally. What, about, what are these ones? Again, they're in an instrument, in a device. They are not going to reveal themselves, no. No, so just minus and plus for some reason. That's kind of odd. Why would they put minus and plus there? Okay, now I think I've reached the end of the road for meters. Bet you, bet you I find another couple long <laughs> while I'm doing this. Oh, I know another one. I haven't got to go get it right away. Okay, so I think this one qualifies as a portable meter. It's a little on the heavy side. Okay, so I, I went over this one a little while ago to check it out. I've still not got it in any kind of service, but I have some ideas for it. Now, the movement's here. This is the ink tray that you put ink in. This is the pointer that delivers the ink. This is the point where the ink comes out, writing on the paper. This is where the ink goes in. It rides inside the tank. And it's just because of the small dimension of the pipe here that uh, ink is drawn, drawn along to the end. Plus, it's being wiped off. It's being drawn out onto the paper so more ink comes out. meters pivoting here. It's got some heavy weights out here to make it work like that. And then it's sitting, this part is sitting in a meter movement. Let's take a see if we can see inside there. I'm sure we can see inside there. up today. Okay, well, I see, first of all, I see a nameplate I don't think I, I spotted before. I looked at this style number, serial number, measuring element. So it's the style number and the serial number of the measuring element. That piece in there, hard to 
see. This is the meter movement. Let me poke it. I'll poke it with a screwdriver here. This part right here. So that, that's the meter movement. And I've got the pointer. You saw the pointer. Pointer rides in top, in, in, inside there. Now, this looks to me like this thing requires horsepower to operate. Uh, this is this is no 20,000 ohm per volt meter. That's for sure. Um, this guy here, I believe, this one's also ink inside the little container here. This here, now I'm going to guess, I don't really know what this is for sure. Looks like it rides on this lever. And I'm going to guess that lever can pop up or something. Looks like it moves up and down. And you can put dots here. This, this just rides on the edge of the paper like this. Something like that, like that. And it just puts dots here. And you can probably use that for timing, for marking events. Uh, when events take place, put a mark, things like that. Well, there's some more stuff down here. Model AW. Uh, it says milliamps in there. Full scale milliamps, three. Three milliamps. And this is a zero adjustment. I, <laughs> I forgot it was there. And over here it says max circuit voltage 750 full scale millivolts at meter. <laughs> when did they say voltage 750 millivolts full scale? 750 full scale millivolts. What a weird way of saying that. At meter. So I take it that means right on the meter movement. You can stick 750 millivolts. And at that point, you'd probably be putting three milliamps through it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we're going to use this to read uh, too many. You know, a ABC voltage not going to work well. <laughs> I don't think that radio is big enough to drive this meter. So, uh, what? Well, so what was this meter for? Well, I, this meter was presented to me when I worked at the power company, and I was the corrosion technician. And I went out and I made all these weird tests, which I'd love to talk about, but I won't. Uh, I'm making them out on the streets of Toronto in public and people stopping and coming over and saying, what exactly are you doing? Because I was doing what looked like really weird tests uh, for corrosion work. So they gave me this meter. This, this meter is supposed to go out and make measurements with this meter. I almost laughed at them when they handed it to me. Well, look at the thing. It was 1978. Uh, uh, 1978, you know, this kind of thing was floating around, right? This is what they handed me. Oh my gosh. It's like 40 years out of date. Never actually used this meter. I quickly acquired a different one. There's no way I was going to lug this thing around. And, and why a recording meter? because part of the job I was doing involved tracing stray transit system current from the transit system, the streetcar and subway system in Toronto. Current that drives the vehicles doesn't flow entirely within the transit system. Some of that current gets into water mains and gets onto uh, power company neutral systems. It can get onto gas pipes and in itself it's not a terrible problem unless it's a huge current because it'll heat things up but it causes corrosion it causes terrible aggressive corrosion and you know water mains all exposed gas pipes all exposed old power cables all exposed so while you're busy enjoying your transit system it is eating your underground structures to death this was a big problem from when it was discovered, right when streetcars started operating, that would be the late, late 1800s, very late 1800s, up until about the 1940s or 50s, there was a going concern, uh, corrosion caused by straight current. 
on transit systems. And many of the big cities in North America abandoned their electric transit systems, and it got down to just a few cities, Toronto being one of them. Now more electric systems are being installed again, and I think they still run on direct current. They still have all the same problems. But hopefully smarter engineers today are, are designing things uh, uh, right, right from the start. So, uh, you, you, you know, when you see those guys digging up that water main, you wonder what happened to it. If it's in the city of Toronto, chances are the subway system killed it. <laughs> yeah. So now it's time to actually use these meters and see what difference there really is. So now I'm going to stop and drink some coffee and then we'll do that. I have to make a, a repair on one of these before I can use it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try certainly this meter, certainly this meter, and and this meter, and and probably the one I use all the time. We'll, we'll just out of sight here uh, because I use it all the time, and uh, we'll compare the results from them. Um, you might say, okay, so well, how do you know what the real value is? Wow, that's a big problem in this world, isn't it? Who's got the real standard? Um, gener generally speaking, I, I trust my digital uh, meter. You know, this guy or, or any meter kind of like that, like any modern meter like that. I, I trust it to a very high degree. Uh, is that because I'm foolish? I don't think so. Um, so that's, you know, if I really want to know the voltage, that's the one I'll grab. Uh, you know, another part of the reason for that is that, you know, it reads in decimal points and it gives a very nice number. But, you know, I don't like using those meters normally uh, for just normal work. Because I, I myself, anyway, you have to read the number and process the value in your head. And if it's going up and down, you have to read the value and then recognize, well, that's a bigger number, or well, that's a smaller number. And then you got to figure out then just how much is it changing. And, and all this stuff is uh, a little bit brain teasing. But if you use an indicating meter, you know, a meter with a pointer on it, all that stuff is graphically displayed to you. Uh, and, and I think if meters had been invented with digital readouts first, and then somebody came along and said, "Hey, look at this one. This one, this one has a graph on it. <laughs> hey, that's a better meter." Uh, but that's not the way it went. And of course, a lot, a lot of the uh, digital meters have a little graph on them, a little digital graph to try to imitate the benefits of the pointer. But I really like pointer meters, or as I think they're called, indicating meters. That's why I've got them all over my shop. Plus, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm trying to do everything with vintage equipment, you know, within reason. Okay, we're ready now, and I have to decide what to measure. So I think I want to try to find a couple of spots in the radio here, on the bench, where there's a chance to read a voltage with high impedance in a high impedance place and a low impedance place. And the, the classic place would be output of the detector measuring the AVC voltage, like I do regularly, measuring it near the detector in a low impedance place and then measuring it near a grid in a high impedance place it should be exactly the same voltage. Now the problem with doing AVC is getting it stable enough um, but the AVC voltage is the one that you know I certainly measure an awful lot in radios and uh, that would be a good one to experiment with. They may, may even learn something on that side in the process. Now can I do this with the radio upside down, inside out and backwards like that? Or do I have to flip it around? Uh, no, I mean, the radio works fine upside down like this. Okay, let's fire it up and uh, 
sure my wires are good here so I have a ground going on for for for, for this meter I have a ground this bright yellow wire for this meter and the others are going to have to share this set of pointers is there anything I'm overlooking I don't think so okay let's let her rip dim bulbs first let's hope the radio still works I'm assuming the resoldering of the questionable connection in there I did at the end of the last video is the permanent solution to the problem that's just faith at this point It's kind of weird behavior. Since I reconnected this, it's like a bit of a weird. I'm imagining the voltage, the uh, uh, inside the potentiometer, the slider is going right past this. No rumbling. Oh, I don't have it on full voltage yet. Definitely something odd there. It's okay though, it's working. Um, now we want to get a steady signal into it. I, I should have. Uh, it's receiving a station right now, I can barely hear it though. That's good. Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, that's, that's better. A good I have to believe that's all time and now. Okay, that's good. Let's leave it like that. Oh, there's the, the mumble. We'll get this meter reading here. Let's start with this guy. This is my go-to meter normally anyway. That I use that you can't see. It's over here. It's over here. I guess, you know, I just disconnected a scope lead. I guess you could use the scope for making voltage measurements, but the scope, of course, doesn't automatically show you things in RMS. You, you see them in peak or peak to peak and you have to do a calculation. The handy value of which is on the face of one of these meters. It's a negative. So AVC voltage is a small voltage. Why don't we start with something a little more potent? We'll start with the low impedance source, that would be the power supply, and we'll just read the B plus at some point. And we'll do it with each meter. So we're on the 500 volt scale. Doesn't matter what scale you're on with this meter, the same impedance is presented because it's based on circuitry. These meters, as you snap the scale switch, you're changing the input resistance. You're changing the resistance of the meter. Changing the resistance the meter presents to the circuit. Good spot for B plus would appear to be right on here. Okay, now I want to make it quite an accurate reading of this amount. So I may have to kind of stick my head in front of the camera here. There's a parallax problem, right? The meter pointer floats above the scale. It's not right on the scale. It floats above the scale. So if you look at it on an angle, you get a different reading, right? That's why some of the better meters will have a mirror. See, see on this one? There's a mirror right here. And that's so you can look at the pointer in the mirror. And, 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 and what you do is, I'll show this to the camera. Of course, you're, you're, you're lining your head up, it's doing this. And when you get them, when you move your head just right, you get, you get exactly right. that's the reading. There you are, parallax. Uh, no other meters have a, a mirror behind them. Okay, everything should be stable, I think. Go ahead and check again. So, very accurately there. I have to put my head right in front. Oh, why don't we use the other, let's use the other uh, camera here. Okay, reading. So on that meter, drifting up and down a little bit, a hair above 270, 272. The feed into the radio right now, 117. 
and almost 118 volts. I gotta write this stuff down because as much as I think I'm gonna remember it, <laughs> I won't. I don't even remember it now. I don't even remember it now. Just make sure we get it right here. 272, right, 272. This is the B plus, and this was with the uh, my uh, I just called the my main VTBM. Okay, nothing like careful record keeping. So now I'm going to flip to a different meter. Now this is a very low impedance. There's a lot of oomph that can come through, so it's gonna this should operate any meter completely no meter should cause a drop in the supply voltage that I'm reading even their 500 ohm per volt one so here we go with this guy so we're going to want to read oh, DC volts three settings 15 150 and 1000 so on the 1000 so we're on the, it, it's at 2,000 ohms per volt. We're on the 1,000 ohm. So that's really 2 million. So this is a 2 mega ohm meter at this point. I snap it down here, it's much less. 2 mega ohm. So that's pretty good. You don't have to trust me on the reading. Well, maybe not. Maybe my hands are full here. Well, let's see if we can. I'll do this a little differently. I get a clip lead. I'm gonna bring a clip lead out with high voltage on it. This is a dangerous game. A dangerous game. I would like to clip this to something that won't wander. Because okay, is that gonna is that good enough? Won't wander. Okay, clipping on. Under here, this really, you know, at some point I'm going to be screaming. I'm sure. Now we can flip cameras and get a really good reading off that meter. What does it say? Did we check the zero on this thing? No, I don't think I checked the zero. So we're going to check the zero first. That's a touch. Whoa! Guess what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Jim just got a shock. How did Jim get a shock? Jim knows already how he got a shock. Stupid Jim, stupid Jim. Stupid, stupid, stupid Jim. You see this camera? It's a bloody dangerous camera. This is grounded. This ring, which looks like plastic, can get shocks off it. I don't know how. But this is not ground. This is grounded. Yeah, holding the camera. Do it again. Holding this lead. How long did it take for that to brush my hand? You stupid idiot. Okay, so I like to be hard on myself when I do these things because every time I get a shock, even a little one, this was a fairly little one, I say to myself, that could have been it. And I put myself in a circumstance where I allowed electricity to flow through me, uncontrolled. I just rolled the dice and lived through this one. That's how I look at it. And I got sweat on me too. That's how upset I am about it. Okay, I like to leave these things on video. Um, because, uh, you know, there's important lessons I'm learning. You can benefit from them without getting a lift at the same time. Okay, so what are we going to do? Now, I don't want to be touching this stupid camera. This thing has caused me a number of shocks. And I'm holding it again. I'll hold it by the rubber end. How about that? Put it down. Pick it up. Stick it in. What a dummy. Okay, but I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm ready to live. live living. Okay, let's take the reading here. So that would be, because uh, we're on a thousand scale. And look, there's a there's a mirror on <laughs> this cheap little meter as a mirror. Okay, we'll make use of it. There we are. 265. I'd say that's 265. 
be fooled by the shadow. 270. I'd say it's 270. Okay, do you remember what it was on the other meter? Do you remember? 272. Okay, so this is the Micronta. Micronta. 270. Wow. And you know what? You couldn't, you can't, you can't, you know, this meter, you can't read it more accurate. Now remember, high voltage is there. So we're going to do this meter next. So, thousand. That's the common. And then the uh, thousand would go, let's see, that's 1500 there. That's 300. If I could go into 300 and get a reading. Okay. Okay, now, just, you know, for safety's sake. I'm not trying to provide anybody with 100% guidance on safety, but as soon as I pull this ground out, this whole meter will rise to the voltage of the red wire. Now it's all plastic, right? So you can't get a shock off it. Or can you? You know, or can you? Is there a screw that goes in the back? Does that go into plastic? Who knows, right? As long as this is in, the chance of, of this meter kind of going to this voltage is quite low. Pull it out. Put it in. Pull it out. Put in the 300. Swing. Here we are. Okay, let's switch meters again and we'll take a close look at this one. And of course, anybody knows nothing happens to the radio while we're doing this because there's no way the radio can be affected. Oh, son of a gun, the lighting is really bad here. Uh, we're on the 150 scale, no, we're on the 300 scale. So, so that's reading. Uh, okay, so 25. I would say, so that, that's 20, 20, that's 30 up there, so that's 27 and a half there. Oh, what have they done there? So that'd be 20. So this is reading about 260, uh, 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 10, 10 divisions to get up, to go up five, two divisions per five, one division. That'd be, I don't know. <laughs> the, the scale is not friendly for me to read. About 260, I would say, because it's 275 on the next long dash, 75, 70, oh, it's 5 per division, 250, 260, 270, 280, yeah, 5, oh, this is a tough meter to read, accurately, 26 with a half of 5. 25 with half a 5. I don't even know what that means. We're going to call it 260 because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> yes, if I concentrated harder, I could probably figure it right out. But we're just having fun here, right? I mean, this isn't going to make much difference in anybody's life. So maybe mine, 260. So a little low on that one. But did I check the zero on this? Now wait. Let's not pull this out and leave this high voltage thing laying around here. If I got another meter, I want to check this meter. Let's get rid of this clip lead before I, I get another shot. See, I even knew it's dangerous to do this kind of stuff. And still I managed to get a shot. Oh my gosh. This one I can just read direct with the pointer. That's perfect. Turn it on. I'm 
have to give it a little bit of time to get down to, uh, well, in the meantime, let's use the, the one I said I used as the standard. Let's take it with the standard. So this meter, I believe, is 10 mega ohm input impedance on all on all scales, I believe. So we're on the 1,000 volt scale. High side of 270. So this is on the uh, unity, unit, unity, unity, 270. Bro, well, really not much, not much drama here so far. And now we're ready on this meter. Now all these meters, I've calibrated all these as best I could some time ago, so I expect them to come up pretty good. We're on that 500 volt scale, so 270 somewhere in the middle, 260, 270 right up in there. And here we go. Okay, so on there I'm reading 275. And how's the zero? The zero is high. The zero is high. Let's adjust the zero. Okay, take the reading again. We're reading 268 on there. It's fluctuating slightly. 268. Wow. That's really, really a good show. That's the KG620. Wow. That's, this is really good. Okay, so basically, uh, since the circuit these meters have been reading cannot be influenced by any of the meters that I've used, it's interesting to see they've all come out with pretty much the same voltage. Very reassuring. Now we're going to try to do the same thing only on a circuit that can be influenced uh, easily. There's, there's two circuits. There's one that will be influenced by any one of these meters. And I can prove that by just taking one of the high, high impedance ones and just touching it and we'll be done with that demonstration. So we'll grab you know, for instance, this meter, and and what am I touching? I don't even know what I'm touching. What am I touching? I'm going to touch the grid, the grid, the grid cap, the grid cap, which is way the heck out of reach. Way, way, the, way the heck out of reach. Okay, any other grid? I think this is a grid. Let's try something else. <laughs> Uh, that meter's not moving either. Here we are. Okay. So I'm picking what I'm pretty sure is a grid connection. I'm using this meter. Like it's just not. Can you see the meter actually moved a bit? went negative, so I think I'm on a grid. So now 1.5 volts, full scale, negative upscale. And you can hear it throwing, throwing the radio off. Go again. Go again. 15 volt scale, we can read. 15 volt scale. 5.5. 5.5. 5.5. And that's on the KG. And this is on a grid. I think it's on a grid. So that, that's one done. Okay, we'll try the other uh, similar meter. That guy over there. Oh, what was I touching? <laughs> Should I bring a clip lead out? No, I can't on this. It's a grid. So. There we go. Well, it hardly made any difference at all on that. So this this has a switch on it. When you're making DC measurements, you put this this way, and inside there's a resistor that comes into the circuit, a large resistor, and that increases the impedance of the probe. 
you know, to be very sure this is in the right position for DC and not for AC. For AC, you don't need the resistor because I guess the thinking is AC circuits are lower impedance. So you're not going to run into a problem, I think. I think that's what they're thinking there. I don't really know. Got to be over there to be calibrated properly. Okay, let's touch that grid thing again. If it's making a difference, it's extremely minor. We'll take the reading, 1.5 volt scale. I'm just going to move this camera here. 1.5 volt scale. Right over, just like the last one. You could hear that a bit, couldn't I? You can hear it a bit. 5 volt scale. Right over, just like the other meter, 15 volt scale. Without influencing the radio, really, much at all. The reading is 8.2, and it's bound to drift a bit for a number of reasons. 8.2. So we got an 8.2 reading there. That's pretty interesting. 8.2 on the VTBM. But there you can see the difference beginning to show up. I guess this is a lower lower impedance meter. I don't know. I have to do a little research. Well, this one says 2,000. Well, again, it's an electronic meter. It doesn't matter what the movement says. Okay, we're going to try this now with the, the crapo meters. One, one thing I did with this, this meter is I left it on the highest scale. And it's going to give you the highest resistance. But now we're going to read a lower voltage. I have to go on a lower scale. What are we going to end up with? So on the thousand scale. The meter's reading upscale when it's actually a negative voltage and the zero. The zero depends upon you know how you have the meter position. Shouldn't, but seems to slightly. And so it should be going negative. It's going positive. Is, but I don't get it. Here we go. It's unreadable on that scale. We're on a thousand volt scale trying to read eight volts. You can see it there. But, so I'm gonna go down to the 150 volt scale. It's not that way, this way. 150 volt scale. So now we it's uh, about uh, maybe a, a seventh of its impedance. What it was. It's gone down that much. So it moved the meter ever so slightly backwards barely see it go. 15 scale. It's going to go backwards. Now it's going backwards a lot. Let's flip these leads. So the thing about these meters, uh, uh, isolated meters like this, like this, is they're not grounded in any way to anything unless you've done it. Whereas all these meters are plugged in the wall and there's some kind of grounding thing going on there. Okay, what do we get? Get a radio that goes way off in the reading 15 5. We get 5 volts. So that was the micronta 5. These are all minus numbers too. Okay, uh, now we're going to try that classic guy here technician's meter. I need, I need the leads, I need the leads. Everything's safe, yep. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I guess my electric shock rate here in the shop is about one every six months. And I've only gotten one whopper, it was years ago, one real whopper that, that really threw me off. But like I say, every, every shock makes me stop. And that's because of a conversation I had we're going to start at 1500 volts here. 
I had with the corner. And I won't go into the details of it right now, but let's just say until I spoke, spoke with him, I assumed you're really not very likely to get killed with uh, you know 120 volts. But after speaking with him, I realize it's just a matter of luck that you don't get killed. Well, the pointer's way off the zero here. Nice zero that way, but way off this way. So we'll, we'll, we'll try it like this. Meter, well, 1500. Um, we're trying to read a tiny little, tiny little voltage here. 150. We'll start with 150 volt scale. Should go, should go backwards a little wee bit. Kill the radio. Went backwards a little wee bit. Okay. I could, have, I could have put these in this way. Now we're on the 15 volt scale. 6 volts, actually a 6 volt scale. 6 volt scale, what will happen then? Okay, so we're trying to read that. 3.9, 3.8, I get 3.8 out of that. So this is the, uh, oh, I didn't name. I said 3.8, didn't I? 3.8 volts. Uh, am, I, am I not in the... Oh, I didn't read it with this one. Did I, did I not read it with that one? Too many voltmeter leads here. Oh, there. Okay, so we're going to try with this one. 20 volt scale. Two volt scale. Point 0.7. So the other meters all read, uh, you know, some volts. Now this one's reading point 0.7. A little bit of trouble with these, this meter these days. Wow. What is the input and peak of, of this meter? I don't think it says it anywhere. On it, I have to do a little research. The fact that it doesn't say on it is a bit of a hint. Nah, I can't imagine this is anything under 10. Okay, now this raises a really interesting question. Can you just take an ohmmeter and read the resistance of another ohmmeter? How can you possibly do that? When you switch it to ohms, a bat there's a battery inside that's going to drive things. So you certainly can't do it just by... No, you can read the resistance of not an ohmmeter, read the resistance of the voltmeter. Can you do this? Oh, I know. I, I, I can try it. Can you just do that? I suppose so. So we'll try this guy. Is this meter to read the resistance of this one? Can these go right in? They can. <laughs> okay. So we will start at the high scale, 1500. Get the uh, hundred and that's drifting around a hundred and eighty K. Hundred and eighty K. It's gone up. Ten times. I'm going down in voltage. It's going up. Back to kind of what it was. Point seven, and the first one I did was no point one, so 180 or so. And then the next one is uh, about 10 times that, and we get six 
600,000. And you get. Ooh. That's on the 6 volt scale. Twenty six thousand ohms. Yeah, on the low scale, twenty six thousand ohms. Twenty seven. Low scale, twenty six. Again, can you really just do this? Um, twenty six K on the low scale. About the same. Three hundred K on the high scale. I, I guess this is a valid thing to do. So that's two million on the thousand. Micronta. Two mega ohms on the scale. Fifteen hundred scale. Roughly 10 mega ohms. Geez, does this get the same reading every time I. <laughs> Interesting question now. Come on, meter, don't, don't throw me all off here. Oh. Yeah, my readings just aren't valid on this meter anymore. 300k? I thought the uh, doesn't this have a uh, like an amplifier in it? You know, I don't really know. I just assumed it did. That you're not really when you're not really feeding a signal right. Well, there's no meter movement. There's no meter movement, Jim. There's no meter movement. Some comparator or something going on in there. Okay, so 400, can't go lower, 400, I think the short answer, 1.2, 1, yeah. short answer is I can't do this accurately at all, it's just going on, i got problems, look at that, how did that happen? Yeah, I'm going to give up on this meter, it's just, this is not helping, this is really messing things up. I don't know, what do you do? Open that up and fill it full of WD-40? Is that how you fix that? Ah, I've kind of lost it here. Kind of lost it. So, so we've done the high impedance and the low impedance measurement. We found on the low impedance, power supply measurement, the higher voltage. So the meters are all really quite accurate. And we found on the grid test, which is the high impedance test, that the meters were uh, uh, ranged. But surprisingly, the one that seemed to do the best is the one I use all the time, which didn't seem to load down the circuit. And now that, just, just pursue this a little bit here. This meter seemed to load down the circuit, and, and this one didn't. But they're both vacuum tube voltmeters of similar vintage and quality. Well, let's double check this. So, if I take the reading again, Hi. On the sensitive grid, and we're watching this meter here, and we're listening to the radio. This is almost no effect on the radio. Uh, lower scale shouldn't really make a difference. Higher scale. We get uh, what reading do we get there? 50 volt scale. We get uh, that's nine volts. That's eight point something volts. This 
you know, eight point something volts. Amazing. Okay, so if we put this guy on, same thing. Volts, 15, negative. There we go. We should go upscale. And it just wipes it out. Oh, that's a really bad sign. <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. Do or hire, or you will sell free. And his whole marketing program creates a bidding war which maximizes your sales price. There are no long term. Oh, no. And you get your new Oh, no. In three days or two or three. I don't know if you caught what happened there, but I tapped a contact and the radio came to life. Isn't that the problem I just fixed? Interestingly enough, I tapped a different terminal. Oh, son of a gun. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I got two things on the go now. I got a radio that appears to be in trouble again, and I got all this meter stuff I'm doing. I'm just finishing. Well, let's use this one again. <laughs> as much as it certainly had an effect on the radio, didn't it? And it finished with the reading. <laughs> so. Um, a 15 volt scale on that meter, that is 5.2. The last time it was 5.5. Uh, what to do now? Okay, uh, so I think I'm done with filling up with all these meters today. Um, it, 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 what it's highlighted for me is uh, this was a good exercise because it's revealed how nice this meter is compared to some others here that I assume would all be I assume that this guy would work pretty much the same bad assumption I shouldn't assume anything here at all I guess so but now my attention is going right back to that radio and what happened here oh my gosh um, yeah so I think I'm going to leave this guy playing and come back in a while and see if it's cut out again. It's a very pleasant, very pleasant volume there. Just leave it playing. Oh boy. That's been about 15 minutes and uh, the radio's still operating, but uh, I want to do an end to this video now. So uh, one thing about this meter. Why is this meter loading down the circuit when the other VTBM doesn't? And that's what these meters are for. They're meters to be used so they don't load down the circuit. And I think the difference is in the probe. So here's my other meter probe, the one I was showing you with the switch and that. And I was basically identifying the problem without even realizing it. Flip it this way and there's a large resistor in the circuit in here. And the meter is calibrated with this resistor in place. This one has this probe. This is not the original probe. This is a safety probe. This has a fuse in it, and it's designed to blow if you pump more than a half an amp or one, what, two amps through it, it's going to blow. It's a safety probe, so I just use it as a probe. But what it doesn't have in it is it doesn't have a resistor. How much you want to bet the original probe with this meter came with something just like this one with a, with a resistor in it. Now I've gone ahead and I've calibrated this meter with this probe. So it reads accurately, but it doesn't, but it's much lower impedance than it could be. So you know I could I could put I could do something about that if I wanted. Maybe better just to be aware of the situation with it. Uh, and uh, we're just gonna leave the radio running here and wait for it to wait for it to conk out. Well, it's still operating. 
Well, I'm going to poke around a bit and see if I can kill it. Start with a wooden stick. Sure went sudden though, didn't it? Okay, so this is the one that's always caused the trouble. This is the one I touched that seemed to bring it back to life. Is it the volume by some chance? No. Oh, it's really gone. It's like it's got a dead spot now. That's. voltmeter lead to the terminal that brought it to life last time. It's definitely not, not what it was. I want this too louder. Okay, here we go. Just tapping lightly. Not bringing it back. Uh, this is the one that did it before. Down. Oh, that's son of a higher with Freddie Anderson at his best than Jack Campbell at his best. I just do. I just think that there's also an element of... Ah, uh, man. <laughs> just, I'm sorry, but to me it's a little personal just from this standpoint. Yeah, I'm pretty sorry too about that. Okay, so now I'm going to end it here. <laughs> okay, so basically I spent time playing with meters until the radio packed it up again. That's kind of how this video went. I'm back to the same problem in this radio. Oh my gosh, what could it be? There we go. It, well, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll go away. <laughs> I'm going to go outside now and have a nice day outside and not worry much about this radio until tomorrow morning. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you. Bye.